Hollywood. So great. His luck's pretty good. <laughs> of course, uh, then again, old Bud's got a place to stay tonight. <laughs> He's a writer. Why was Mr. Winkler lying in state in there? Aggie thought it was appropriate that he stay at the duck factory right up to the end. Okay, what do you say? Let's roll! She seems to be holding up well. Who? Aggie over there, Mrs. Winkler. Aggie isn't Mrs. Winkler. Aggie's the business manager. Well, then which one is Mrs. Winkler?
tell him to be here. Tell who? The minister. Was I supposed to do that? <laughs> okay, listen up. We're gonna have to wing this. What? The widow Winkler forgot to get a minister. And what are we supposed to do? I went to a funeral once where everyone told nice stories about the guy who died. This is Buddy Winkler we're talking about. We don't have a nice story between us. <laughs> I'll go first. I'm sure everybody here knows that nobody was closer to Buddy than I was. Nobody. <laughs> I'll never forget those nights at the studio when we worked till after midnight. And Sometimes all night. And now, that dear, 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 dear man is gone. I, uh, I remember so well the last time I saw him last Tuesday. I was, uh, on the phone getting estimates on having the toilet fixed when Buddy looked up from his desk and winked at me in that way of his and he said, Ag. He used to call me Ag. He said, I, I don't know how the duck factory would get through without you. If anything should ever, should ever happen to me, I want you to promise me you'll take over. I intend to keep that promise. As I stand here on this very solemn occasion, Whoa. I'll never forget the first time I met Buddy. You're doing the duck. Oh, Darn it. Excuse me. Anyway, I went to Buddy and asked him if I could borrow $7,000 for the triple bypass surgery. He sat there and thought about it and said, Frank, you know how he liked to kid us pretending you didn't know our names. <laughs> Frank, he said, I really would like to do it, but there's this speedboat I got my eye on. I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> I didn't have the operation, which was just great. Because it turned out that they mixed up my angiogram with somebody else's. <laughs> so I'm here to thank Buddy for the fact that I didn't go through any of that unnecessary <laughs> surgery. <laughs> thank you, Frank. <laughs> so it was my turn to help Buddy wash his car. And I said, Buddy, a lot of us have been thinking, and well, we'd like to have a group medical plan. Buddy put his arm around my shoulder and he said, Hey, why didn't you say something before? I'll fire the whole bunch of you and you can all go over to Disney. I hear they've got a great medical plan. <laughs> and he turned the hose on me. Your turn. <laughs> Who, me? I didn't even know him. You knew him well enough to be a pallbearer. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't know Mr. Winkler at all. Well, but to me, never kid who ever watched Saturday morning cartoons, Buddy Winkler was a household name, like Spider-Man. Good choice. I grew up with the message that Mr. Winkler, through Dippy Duck, of course, sent to the youth of America. That no matter how many times Dippy was flattened by Irving the Terrible, or kicked in the teeth by Rotten Ronaldo, that somehow his good old-fashioned American gumption would always prevail. So even as I stand here on this sad occasion, that philosophy fills me with hope, knowing that you will pick yourselves up after being kicked in the teeth by his death. Dust yourselves off and face whatever the future brings. The kid is running for something. <laughs> this. Boy, we should do this more often. In fact, I want you to all come up to Casa Contento for some food and drinks, okay? Okay. Thanks. Well, great. Then I'll see y'all there. Anybody ever been to Buddy's house? Anybody know where the hell it is? Oh, I was there a couple of times, but it was so dark, I don't think I could find it again. Then how are we going to get there? Follow that car! 